All right, what's up guys? Uh, this is going to be a guide on what I personally think is probably the most broken character slash build in the meta currently. And that is Demon Pact or Blood Pact Demon Form Warlock. If you don't know, this shit is completely beyond insane. Uh, I'm sure you haven't really much, ex or you don't really have much experience fighting them because hardly anyone ever plays this. And one of the main reasons they don't is one, because it's kind of weird to play uh, it feels like relatively clunky and it's kind of hard to gear. Well, not not hard in the sense that the rolls are hard to get. However, the gear you want needs to be really good or the gear like that the build needs needs to be really good or at least decent to make this kit like really worthwhile or to make this build really worthwhile. But however, when you get there, I genuinely think it is better than anything else in the game. Like I without even being completely optimized like without my um plus 10 all that i'm gonna talk about in a minute from like soul collector and uh, blood pack i 1v1 like a full bis barb with warm all through like fucking war cry and sure uh war cry savage roar and all that shit so uh let's go over the build uh let's start off with let's go with perks so your perks are gonna be shadow touch demon armor anti-magic and soul collector so uh if you're unaware the way you used to st oh, actually hold on. i guess let me before i get ahead of myself let me read blood pact so you, whenever you turn into a demon, you get an additional 50 max health, 50 armor rating, and 50 magic res. Your entire body is covered in abyssal flame, taking 1% damage per second and dealing 2 magical damage per second to nearby characters. Once activated, the effect cannot be stopped until the contract is complete. Uh, that just means you just have to disable it. Like you just have to press the button again and turn off. Um, I'm, I'm like the, it, what it means is like the the fucking the fire, taking damage and damaging people. That doesn't stop until you end like uh the ability. And then additionally, by consuming Darkness Shards, you gain plus one all attributes effect for each Darkness Shard consumed. When you become a demon, your skills change to demon-only skills. Left-handed, bare-handed attack, perform up to four combo attacks using both hands, and right-click fires a bolt of darkness, which is just Dark Bolt, the spell. So, there used to be two, well, technically there still is two ways to stack the Darkness Shards. One of them was by going for your spells, and then in here you would use a spell called Spell Predation. And what this does is it removes all magical buffs from the enemy and you gain one darkness shard per buff consumed. So this used to work on your own teammate. So if you had a bard, you said bard bu uh, buff a bunch, you spe use spell predation, eat all the buffs, you get plus 10 all really fast. Now that doesn't work. You can't use it on your own teammates. Uh, however, you can still use it on enemies. And that's why you see I still do actually have it, although I don't actually have the ability to use it. So the off chance I ever got enough knowledge to use it. What I would do is just, like, let's say a Barb's running at me, I would just try to eat uh, the buffs off him and then turn into a demon really fast, right? Not to get the Darkness Shards, but to uh, remove the buffs. So, the other way to do it that is more consistent and less, like, you know, less mid-fight requirement is to use Soul Collector. And what this does is, whenever you kill an enemy, you get one Darkness Shard. And it has the passive of, um, if you cast a Dark Magic spell, you deal 10% uh, more Dark Damage for each Shard that you have. So, for this reason, we're not going to run Dark Bolt, Ray of Darkness, Eldritch Shield, any of that, because those are all dark magic spells, and if you use them, it will consume your uh, you will consume your stacks of Soul Collector, and you don't want that to happen. You only want to use Soul, uh, Soul Collector stacks for Blood Pack. So, for this reason, like I said, you don't run any dark magic spells, and you don't run anything else that can proc it. So, now, to go over the perks. We have Shadow Touch, we have Demon Armor, we have Anti-Magic, and Soul Collector. Shadow Touch... Well, you, most people are going to say, like, okay, like, oh, only two true damage and two health. Like, that's nothing. You know, like, why are you running that? So, the big thing about this is this pretty much counteracts the burn damage or, like, the damage you're taking from Blood Pact. Like, at some point, like, there will be some points where you're taking, like, you know, 2.5 damage per tick when you get, like, 200 plus HP. Uh, but for the most part, this is pretty much just going to heal you up. Also, because you're attacking more than one time a second. So this is pretty much a net heal as long as you're hitting your attacks. And two true magic damage. Demon, the one downside of this build is your damage is relatively low in demon form. Like you're super tanky and your damage isn't that bad. But it is lower than, you know, like a barb swing and a war maul or like a falchion or something along those lines. However, this is a good perk. And honestly, not many other perks are even like useful to run here. Um, Like vampirism isn't, you know, vampirism is only useful with shadow touch uh, for you. Immortal Lament, we're not really casting spells. We're never going to be that low. Uh, Dark Reflection. So the big thing about Dark Reflection, I'm pretty sure, is this consumes Soul Collector stacks, so you don't want this. Like, this isn't good, because they hit you and they take your Soul Collector stacks, then you don't have the plus 10 on Demon form. Torture Mastery, well, we don't care about that. Malice, we don't care about Will. This would literally just give us MR. Um, once again, Dark Hands, but we're not using any Dark Magic spells. Curse Mastery, we're not really casting curses. The only thing this would really be good for is Curse of Sacrifice, if you're using it. 
but you're not really using it. And I guess Bloodstained Blade, but I'm not even sure if it works for Bloodstained Blade, because I don't really play Warlock that much. And then Infernal Pledge, which is completely irrelevant. So, uh, the other perk we have is Demon Armor. This allows us to wear all of these really tanky armor pieces that gives a ton of stats that we really want. So, Demon Armor is a no- The two no-brainers, or the three, I guess, really, are Demon Armor, Anti-Magic, and Soul Collector. Uh, Shadow Touch, if you really wanted to swap it out for something, maybe you could. I don't know what you'd swap it for, but for some reason, this is the one you could uh, swap off. Anti-Magic is 25% magic damage reduction, except against Divine Magic. And for those that don't know, um, so this says gain 25%. However, it doesn't visually show here, but it does add on. So effectively right now, I have 47.4% MR, even though it doesn't show. And no, this does not allow you to go above the cap. So the only amount of magic res you need is you want to get to 50%. When you're in demon form, if you anything above 50% will be wasted magic res and just will not be giving you any stats. So you don't want to go above 50 magic res on Warlock as long as you have anti-magic active. And then, like I said, I just want to have a soul collector. This is the way you get your um, stats. Other than that, uh, you know, not a lot to talk about the perks. They're pretty straightforward. And then basically the way you want to play this build is, you know, like you have ranged poke. However, you're, you don't build magic damage. So most of your spells are not really going to do much. Curse of Pain is kind of just there just in case, like... Just in case you can't really push and you're not a demon yet, you know, it's some small mid-range damage. Not the crazy, it's definitely not high damage at all, but, you know, it's something. Because, to be fair, there's literally nothing else you could cast here. Like, maybe you could run Power of Sacrifice, however, you don't want to be doing even more damage to yourself. And in demon form, you're not going to be getting the max value out of the 15 Vig and 15 Strength. For example, whenever I'm in demon form, uh, demon form with Bard buff, I'm already at 50 Vig. So, that's pretty much, uh, like, a wasted stat I'm getting. And Curse of Weakness actually isn't awful, but the downside of this is if you're in range to cast Curse of Weakness on somebody, chances are you're going to be going in demon form and running at them. So you don't really have a ton of uh, value to cast this. Evil Eye, I mean, this thing doesn't even work, I don't think. And then, like I said, none of these are like Eldritch Shield, maybe, but the problem with this is it consumes your uh, uh, Darkness stat or your Soul Collector stacks, and you don't want that to happen. But uh, other than that, the spells that you do use are Bloodstained Blade, because Demon Form has a really, really good scaling with weapon damage. So Bloodstained Blade, Divine Strike, Warsong, all of those are very uh, good on Demon. Uh, it actually makes your damage decent. Curse of Pain, like I said, just mid-range damage. Hydra to get your stacks and for healing. Life Drain to heal off the Hydra if you don't want to kill it. Like you know, you, let's say you just for, like you drink a pot and you can like life drain your Hydra. Doesn't heal you for a doesn't heal you for a ton, but it does heal you. Uh, and then Spell Predation, just, like, this last slot you're probably never going to use because you're probably never going to have knowledge for it. But on the off chance you do, you can, like, Spell Predate, you know, a Barb's buffs or something. Now, to go over the gear you're going to wear, truthfully speaking, your weapons don't really matter. Like, you could run Chris Dagger here, you could run Falchion, you know, it doesn't really, like, these, you're not going to use these pretty much ever. 99.9% .9 of the time, you will never use these unless you're killing PV. That is the only time. And obviously, use a book. Uh, the more magic power you have, probably the better. You don't really need magic healing on this because you're not running like Torture Master or anything like that. So just run book, shield, plus the melee weapon, Chris Dagger, Falchion, both are fine. Then for the gear choices, uh, there are like several different things you can use. There's a ton of different combinations. However, this is the one I've ended up with because mainly these are the best pieces of gear I have. To start off with, Gearman Boo. Uh, it gives Vig, it gives MR, it gives high armor rating, and the Moosey penalty isn't that low, or isn't uh, that bad. Pretty decent across the board. Some other options to run are Chappelle. The Chappelle is an option. Uh, Barbuda is another one. However, Barbuda does lose out a ton of HP. You know, like, let's say, I don't think of it to have a Barbuda with HP on. But, you know, let's just, like I say, I equip this for some reason, I lose 13 HP. This has 3 max health on it, so effectively I'm going to lose about 10 HP for this for very little dex when you could just roll dex on another piece. However, if you want to run this because you want more decks, that is an option, but this does have less armor rating, which is pretty big. You do want that armor, and it's more of a penalty. While having slightly more MR, I'll tell you in a minute, you actually don't need that much MR. I mean, I guess I can go over it now. The stats you're looking for, you want about 26% MR, 25, 26% MR, because then with bard buffs, or bard buffs in demon form and plus 10 all, it's going to cap you out on MR. You'll be above 50% or about 50%, somewhere around there. Not that I don't know the exact numbers off the top of my head, but you'll be pretty much MR capped, 70% plus at the least. And then for PDR, uh, ideally you'd have like 55, 60%, but it's really hard to get up to that number because like I'm going to go over it in a second, you need a ton of other stat rolls on gear. So, like I said, gear and boot, very good. Uh, rolls you're looking for, dex is good, max health is good. Strength isn't ideal because your strength is always going to be low, and your actual on-hit damage is very low. Like, the damage of your claws hitting them isn't very high, it's never going to be high. 
That's why, like I said, you're gonna. Or I haven't said it yet. <laughs> I'm like I'm gonna say you're gonna build true damage. But Dex is a good roll. Max health is a good roll. Agi is another good roll. Move speed wherever you can because as you see, my move speed is relatively low. Moving on, uh, champion armor is a very good chest piece because you have strength and vig, uh, which is just pretty much double HP rolls, and it has um, good it has good armor rating, decent MR. Uh, another option that you could wear here perhaps is Templar. Templar has about the same movement speed penalty while having more MR, and it gives a will, which gives further more uh, further MR. But like I said, if you do that, you're going to have way less HP. And then for rolls, uh, all attributes is still a good roll because you use so many. Vig, Agi, Dex, uh, Will, even Strength to a tiny extent. Strength isn't the best, but it's not the worst. But pretty much getting all attributes is great. Uh, the only things you don't really care about are knowledge and resourcefulness. Knowledge is decent because it lets you get to use your fourth um, spell, which is pretty good. It's not like it's going to be the end of the world if you don't have it, but it's not bad to have. The max health bonus, good roll. Action speed, another good roll. It's basically just dexterity. Then for the gloves, I have Agi and True Fizz damage. Magic pin is a dead stat. That's just something bad. Heavy gauntlets are good. You could also wear reinforced. You can wear light gauntlets. Uh, I think those are very good options. Honestly, I think there is an argument to be made for Grave Wolf gloves. I think these are actually very good. However, you would need really good rolls on these. Like you would want like uh, three decks on them or something else like that, right? Like three decks, three vig, or you know four max HP or three max HP, whatever the roll is now. Just something else that's good because these give agi however the thing is for the most part well i guess it's a max hp bonus you do the roll max hp percent but the thing is these give three agi so ideally you just roll three agi on these because like i said with the movement speed being nerfed you are going to want agi everywhere you can to make up for the fact you can't get on legs anymore now moving on to that legs plus one all here because plus one all is still a very good stat and then armor rating and max health uh, plate pants. These do give minus MR. However, they have incredibly high armor rating. And in this build, armor or PDR is much more important than MR because of anti magic. So just imagine you're always playing with like 25% more, right? And whenever you go demon form, you get that plus 10 all and plus 50 MR. So that's 10 more will that gives you more MR even uh, more. So as you see, getting MR is or getting MR is way less important. Like as long as you're around that 25%, you are chilling. So even if you lose a bit for wearing plate, not the end of the world really not that big a deal uh armor rating is a good roll max health is a good roll because for the most part that's your what this build is you're just a fat front line a really really big front line you're somewhere between a fighter and a barb but somehow better than both of them then for the boots dashing boots these are going to give mr like i said you want like you want mr like i mean you don't not want mr you just don't need a ton of it for example like if i wear ruggeds these are only give me about 18 percent so i would like to keep these on ideally because then uh, I'm going to be around that 75% threshold. That's going to cap you out and make you pretty much unkillable. Now, with uh, movement speed removed from plate pants, or plate pants, removed from pants, you are going to want double move speed on your boots for pretty much, this is pretty much every build. You almost always want double move speed now because that's the really the only place you can get good move speed rolls. Everywhere else is going to require Agi. You're going to wear Agi rings, add Agi cloak, something like that. And you really don't want to have to do that for certain pieces like your cloak or your necklace rings are fine but the necklace especially is where you really don't want to have to wear an agi piece so just get double move speed on your boots if you don't have double move speed on your boots then you really cannot afford to wear this heavy armor i would recommend just dropping some hp wearing a chappelle because as you see like if i were to, if i were to put a chappelle on with this kit like you know just some random shitty one i would gain two percent move speed just off the bat and uh, now onto the rings and the jewelry. So I'm wearing Agi rings. These are both very, very good rings. The main stat you want to look for is true physical damage. You want this everywhere possible. So gauntlet or like gloves, rings, cape, and pendant. You want true fizz damage on all of them. At least, at least you want additional. Ideally, you do want true though. Uh, so other than that, just look for any other good rolls. HP is good. Action speed is good. Damage reduction, magic, physical, both fine. Um, nothing super complicated here. Like, as you can see, these are two very good rings. No more plus all on rings, so, you know, don't really have to worry about that. For the necklace, uh, same thing. You want plus all, true fizz damage, and then another good roll. Max health is good. I mean, max health is pretty much your best roll, right? Not much else I can say there. If you get action speed, it's fine, but max health is very, very good. And then for the cape, uh, this says true fizz damage, max health magic res, because my magic res is a bit low. Like I said, I tried to get it on the 25% mark. However, I'm not really there, but it is fine. And while I'm speaking about this, let me go pull up. I want to pull up a VOD and show you guys a fight from earlier, just so I can show you how ridiculous this build actually is in action. Because it is pretty insane. All right, let me go here. Let's see where we're at. Pull up my VOD. Content 
video producer right here all right let me find my last run these are not that was not the last run i think it's this one nope this one we died on and i played demon for the last run okay let me go to this nope that's my camera i'm an idiot window capture that's what i'm looking for Capture Brave. Okay, right here. All right. So, basically, there was a really geared team in this lobby. We knew there was right here. As you can see, it is going to be a Wizard Bard Cleric. So, a very geared team. And just watch. So, you see, I have, you know, right here, like, this is my full, my 10 sacks. I'm, I'm being chilling on that. I'm giga juiced. Actually, I don't wait. I, I can actually, I can, wait, let me, let me go into the lobby. I can actually show you guys my stats. So, right there, I was looking at it. Let's see this. So you can see what a demon kit's going to look like. My camera's going to be in the way for those. But look. So look at this. This is with uh, Bard. This is Harmonic and um, the uh, Rousing Rhythms with plus 10 all. I'm th like, just look at, I mean, just look at these right here, first of all. 32, 50, 39, 36, 37, 30, 235 HP, 97.3 move speed, 31.7 action speed, 59.8% PDR. Beside my Cleric, 62.8% PDR. Wait, did I, um, hold on, I, I want to see, I think I scrolled up a bit, I want to see, like, where's it at? Yeah, four, like, this is, like, 48.2% MR, which is 73% MR, with anti-magic added in, so, pretty ridiculous, uh, stats, if I do say so myself. Alright, and then here, back to the fight, just, just watch this, my team is nowhere near me, by the way, and look at the damage I take from these guys, like, look at this, direct fireball, crossbow bolt. This is just, like, this is ridiculous. And you see, like, look at it. Another fire. Splash fireball. Look at, watch this. Look at this bard hitting me. And then I am just mauling him. Just full demon mode on him. Magic missiles actually tickling me. The wizard completely inting. Look at the bard. The bard's literally hitting me right now. The bard is still hitting me. And look at my health bar. I'm just taking no damage. And then if you don't know, so when you go demon form, you have this other perk over here that's on your E. And what it does is it makes it for the next, like, four seconds. Whenever you hit people, you heal for their... Ma I think it's their max HP that you heal for. You heal for the max HP of whatever you're hitting them. So something is, you can if you use this on mobs, you actually heal for a ton on certain ones. Like the big elites, like, you know, demons, you heal for a ton. And then after the fight, you summon your Hydra, and you just kill it, and you get uh, shards. And then I actually want to... I would, Just so you guys don't think I'm, like, you know, trolling here. I actually want to show you guys, like, some of the gear, like, they add on really quick. All right, here it is. I have pop one bandage, and then let's look at the kit. So, like, look. Like, this guy... Like, this guy was fucking juiced. He wasn't... Like, he wasn't, like, full true damage. He had some true damage on. It wasn't full, but, like, I mean... His gear was really good. All right, and... Back to what I was doing. Okay, so... Not a ton else to say about that. So the one thing I will mention, one thing I will mention, is so whenever you turn demon form, you don't have a weapons or your book out, so you don't have the movement penalty from this, but you do still have the movement penalty of the armor you are wearing. However, with plus 10 all, that is adding 3.3% MS. So whatever this number is, just add 10 movement speed to it. So instead of 280, I'd be 290, which is about 96.6% move speed, right? Ideally, you want to be a bit faster than that, but it's not the end of the world. So, with that being said, that pretty much sums up the Demon Warlock Guide. Uh, like I said, I'm not going to say this is the best guide of all time. I'm not going to say this is perfect because I am relatively new to playing this build. There are definitely things out there that can be changed. There are a lot of different uh, builds you can play. You can run, like, Dark Leathers. You can run Wolf Hunters. You can run, you know, like, Northern Full Tunic. A lot of different things that you could do. But this is the way I've been playing it. I think it's been working very well. So feel free to experiment and try out whatever you guys want or just run the build exactly how I have. But do remember that it is the more money you have to willing, like the more money you are willing to spend and more money you have to spend makes this kit exponentially better because it's decent at low gear end. But one of the things that I think is non-negotiable is you need true damage. Without true damage, all you will do is be very, very tanky, but you won't have any threat to anyone because you will do zero damage at all. But thank you guys for watching this video and I will catch you guys next time. Peace. Oh wait, also, uh, I'm if you I don't know when you're watching this, but I'll be doing a 24-hour stream at uh, 
6 p.m. EST on 413. So come by, stop there, watch me on Twitch. Later.